Hawaii's Kilauea volcano has just woken up with a 30,600-meter-high lava column. The lava didn't come from a typical volcanic system, it erupted from a source that had been dormant for more than 600 years, suggesting something massive was moving deep beneath the Hawaiian Islands. The composition of this lava is equally strange, hotter, more explosive, and containing minerals that shouldn't be in Hawaiian magma. At 8.45 p.m. on October 17, 2025, the first scientists from the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory raced up the winding road toward Kilauea's summit. As the field team stepped out of the vehicle near the Halamoamo Observatory, a low thunderous roar mixed with the steady pulse of lava rushed in. The north crater had just begun spewing molten rock 500 feet into the air, its fiery plume illuminating the crater and casting jagged shadows across the landscape. By 8.5 p plume p pl mem, a second fountain erupted from the southern crater, its lava flow rising until it rivaled the first. The team's instruments recorded seismic pulses as the fountains rose more than 300 meters. With each new eruption the landscape changed, not just in data, but in the raw physical sensation of standing on the edge of something vast and unpredictable. By 10.20 p.m. cell phones across the Big Island blared with civil defense alerts. The message was direct and urgent. A hazardous eruption was underway at Kilauea Peak. Residents in downwind areas needed to stay indoors. Evacuation preparations should begin immediately. Within minutes police and ranger patrol cars had blocked all entrances to the park. Some families quickly packed and left their homes, but dozens of others lingered drawn by the fountains that now towered over the crater rim. The roar was relentless, punctuated by the crackling sound of volcanic ash falling across parking lots and roads. The heat was oppressive even from a distance, and the air stung the eyes with the acrid smell of sulfur dioxide. Traffic backed up along Crater Rim Road as more vehicles approached, headlights snaking through the darkness. Park staff worked frantically, redirecting traffic and setting up temporary triage points for anyone having difficulty breathing. Yet while chaos ruled the surface, the real mystery was unfolding deep below. At 5.45 a.m. on October 17, more than 14 hours before the eruption, instruments buried deep below Kilauea's summit recorded something unusual. A faint but persistent shaking came from nearly seven miles below the surface, far deeper than the usual shallow zones of volcanic unrest. Automated monitoring systems detected the anomaly immediately, but the signals were subtle enough that no emergency alarms sounded. The data scrolled across screens in green and red lines silently documenting a disturbance that would only make sense in hindsight. The shaking came in pulses, each one slightly stronger than the last. These weren't the typical earthquake swarms that precede Hawaiian eruptions. The energy signature was different. It moved faster through the rock, and it traveled horizontally rather than vertically. Something was pushing through the deep crust beneath the island, following pathways that scientists didn't know existed. By mid-morning, a series of small earthquakes had rattled the slopes below the summit. Each event lasted only a few seconds, too weak for anyone on the ground to feel. Yet the network of instruments, hundreds of sensors spread across the island, picked up every tremor. The signals mapped a slow, relentless push of magma, gradually moving upward and outward, connecting areas that were once thought to be geologically separate. The monitoring stations recorded the progression with mechanical precision, documenting every shift and tilt. The data created a three-dimensional map of underground movement, showing magma traveling through cracks and channels that previous surveys had missed entirely. And as scientists rushed to interpret these signals, they discovered something that defied all previous understanding of Hawaiian volcanism. But before we explore those, please give me 10 seconds of your time. If you find the content I share useful and interesting, don't forget to press the notification bell so you don't miss any videos and each subscription from you is the biggest motivation for me to continue creating better content. On the morning of October 18, seismic monitoring instruments at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory revealed a pattern that defied explanation. Instead of the usual vertical surge beneath Kalawa's summit, energy was moving horizontally, racing from the southwest caldera toward areas that had been quiet for centuries. Each new tremor traced a hidden path underground, connecting the summit's molten heart to deeper, older structures. Ground deformation sensors recorded something equally disturbing, cycles of swelling and deflation, sudden rises and sudden drops within the land itself, suggesting magma was moving not just upward but sideways into territory that had been considered geologically sealed off. GPS stations anchored to bedrock showed the surface rising and falling in waves, sometimes by several inches within hours. As the data accumulated the urgency in the control room intensified. The seismic readings made it clear that what was happening wasn't just another surface eruption. 
it was a fundamental reorganization of the underground plumbing system. The instruments revealed pulses of energy radiating from the caldera, bypassing known magma reservoirs at the summit, and activating a chain of faults and fractures that connected Kilauea to the larger volcanic network beneath the island chain. For the first time, seismic waves traced a direct line between Kilauea and dormant volcanic systems to the south and west. The implications were staggering. Volcanic features that geologists had mapped as separate and independent now appeared to be connected by a complex network of magma conduits. If molten rock could travel across such distances through these pathways, then existing models for predicting eruptions would need to be completely rewritten. Scientists realized they were witnessing not just a spectacular eruption, but a vivid demonstration that the island's foundations might be shifting in ways never before observed, and only by analyzing that material can researchers determine whether this underground migration is a temporary spike or the start of something much more significant. But can scientists go deep into the crater and retrieve those materials? Just hours after the initial eruption, field teams mobilized to collect fresh samples. The scientists knew they had a narrow window, perhaps less than two days, before the lava's chemical composition would begin to change through cooling and crystallization. Geologists in fireproof suits moved carefully along the rim of the crater, navigating through plumes of ash and choking clouds of sulfur dioxide that reduced visibility to mere feet. Sampling teams split into pairs, each carrying a metal pole and a heat-resistant collection bucket. The procedure was straightforward but dangerous. Approach the flowing lava as closely as safety allowed, extend the pole, scoop a sample of molten material, and retreat before the heat became unbearable. Every movement had to be calculated. The temperatures near the active flows soared above 1,100 degrees Celsius, hot enough to ignite clothing from several feet away. Radio warnings crackled constantly. Shifting winds threatened to blow toxic gases toward the sampling sites. Sudden surges in fountain activity sent waves of heat rolling across the crater rim. One team had to abandon their position when a new vent opened less than 50 meters from their location, forcing them to scramble back to safety. The danger was immediate and constant, yet the teams pressed forward, driven by the knowledge that what they collected in these critical hours could unlock the mystery of what was happening beneath Hawaii. By dawn on October 18 the scientists had gathered enough material but barely. Each sample container held fragments of rapidly cooled lava, still warm to the touch despite being pulled from flows just minutes before. The samples were rushed to the laboratory at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, where a different kind of race was about to begin. Inside the geochemistry laboratory at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, the lava fragments still radiating heat were immediately prepared for analysis. Initial temperature measurements showed readings at the high end of Kilauea's historical range, nearly 1,180 degrees Celsius. But it was the trace mineral composition that ignited controversy among the research team. The samples contained a distinctive mix of olivine and clinoperoxene crystals, with variations in magnesium content and volatile concentrations that fell outside the normal range for recent Kilauea eruptions. The preliminary report suggested the magma was more primitive than anything seen in decades, possibly representing material rising from much deeper sources than the volcano typically taps. As the lead researcher presented the initial findings, skepticism rippled through the assembled scientists. A senior colleague immediately challenged the interpretation, pointing to isotope ratios and reminding the team that similar readings had been recorded during the 1959 Kilauea Iki eruption. Another scientist questioned whether the apparent anomalies were simply artifacts of rapid degassing at the vent, rather than evidence of a fundamentally different magma source. The debate intensified as the team scrutinized thin sections under microscopes and analyzed X-ray fluorescence charts. Some researchers argued the mineral assemblages indicated a deep mantle source, possibly connected to the Hawaiian hotspot itself. Others maintained the data fell within known parameters for Kilauea's magma chamber system, albeit at the extreme end of the spectrum. What made the dispute particularly significant was its implications. If the magma truly represented a new source, it would mean the volcanic plumbing beneath Hawaii was more complex and interconnected than anyone had realized. The discussion continued for hours, with neither side willing to concede. Meanwhile outside the laboratory walls, government officials were grappling with an equally contentious question, how much of this information should the public know, and when? Inside the Hawaii County Emergency Operations Center, officials faced a dilemma that extended far beyond geology. The timing couldn't have been worse. November marked the beginning of peak tourist season, when tens of thousands of visitors would typically flood the islands. News of a massive volcanic eruption threatened to empty hotels and cancel flights, potentially costing the local economy hundreds of millions of dollars. 
Some staff members quietly urge stronger public warnings, pointing to real-time sulfur dioxide readings and the unpredictable behavior of the lava fountains. The data showed gas concentrations in downwind areas that exceeded safe exposure limits. Respiratory problems had already sent several dozen people to local medical centers. The scientists emphasized that volcanic systems showing this kind of unusual behavior could escalate without warning. Others in the room argued for more measured language in public statements. They worried that dramatic warnings would trigger panic and economic devastation. Tourism representatives noted that the eruption was confined to the summit area, miles from hotels and populated zones. They suggested focusing public communications on air quality advisories and restricted access areas rather than broad evacuation warnings. Official statements walked a careful line, emphasizing the location of restricted zones and providing air quality updates, while avoiding language that might sound alarmist. For several days the county held back from ordering mandatory evacuations, instead issuing voluntary advisories for areas with the highest gas concentrations. The decision satisfied no one completely but reflected the impossible balance between safety and economic survival. By dawn on October 18 the eruption had officially ended. The lava fountains subsided, the seismic tremors diminished, and the brilliant red glow faded from the night sky. But the concerns remained. Scientists at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory had spent the morning analyzing numbers that far exceeded any recent record. In just over seven hours, Kilauea had expelled approximately 13 million cubic meters of lava enough material to fill more than 4,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. At its peak the eruption rate had surged to more than 500 cubic meters per second, flooding the crater floor and sending massive plumes of gas and steam miles downwind. The volume and intensity placed this event among the most significant Kilauea eruptions in the past century. Yet even as surface activity quieted, the instruments below ground told a different, more unsettling story. Inside the monitoring center, technicians worked around the clock, activating a newly expanded network of seismic and gas sensors. The monitoring array now stretched from the summit down to remote slopes where the first overnight tremors had been detected. Engineers conducted tests on GPS stations and tilt meters, instruments now positioned along fault lines that had been considered dormant for generations. Data streamed in faster than the analysis teams could process, mapping every tremor and ground movement from deep below the surface. Emergency planners met daily with USGS scientists reviewing contingency plans for scenarios that until recently had existed only in theoretical discussions. The new sensor network was designed to provide early warning of magma movement, but significant gaps remained in coverage. Dense forests and offshore waters created blind spots where underground activity could go undetected until it was too late to respond effectively. The senior USGS volcanologist assigned to Hawaii made the situation clear during an afternoon briefing. If these newly discovered pathways remain open and active, the island chain could be entering a new phase of volcanic activity unlike anything seen in modern history. The eruption had demonstrated that magma could move through the crust in unexpected ways potentially affecting volcanic systems across hundreds of square miles. It was a fundamental warning about how little science truly understood about the forces at work beneath Hawaii. As Hawaii held its collective breath, monitoring systems across the Pacific began detecting something that added an entirely new dimension to the crisis unfolding in the islands. Within 36 hours of the Kilauea eruption, more than 2,500 miles to the northeast, seismic stations around Lawson Peak in Northern California registered a series of unusual signals. Satellite data shows the summit has risen nearly 2 centimeters in just three weeks, a rate of uplift that suggests the movement of magma at depth. Thermal imaging detected increased heat signatures in several areas where fumaroles, volcanic vents that release steam and gas had been inactive for years. The connection between Hawaii and California might seem improbable, separated as they are by thousands of miles of ocean, yet both volcanic systems share a crucial characteristic. They sit above the Pacific Ring of Fire, the massive horseshoe-shaped zone of intense seismic and volcanic activity that encircles the Pacific Ocean. Stress changes in one part of this interconnected system can potentially influence activity in distant locations through a complex web of tectonic interactions. Scientists monitoring Lassen Peak noted that several of the warning signs matched patterns observed before the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens in Washington state. Increased seismicity at depth. Ground deformation indicating magma intrusion changes in gas emissions from summit vents, taken individually each sign might be dismissed as normal background variation. Together they painted a picture of a volcanic system awakening from a century of sleep. Forest rangers reported areas of dead vegetation on the mountain's flanks where toxic gases had killed trees and undergrowth. 
Local residents described new steam vents that appeared seemingly overnight releasing sulfurous fumes that could be smelled from nearby roads. The situation demanded attention, but the full extent of the threat remained unclear. The geological history of the Cascade Range tells a story of catastrophic eruptions that have shaped the western landscape for hundreds of thousands of years. Lassen Peak itself is just one feature within a vast volcanic field that covers more than 200 square miles. The Lassen Volcanic Center has erupted repeatedly throughout its history, each event leaving layers of ash and pumice that record the violence of past explosions. Just 1,000 years ago the Chaos Crags erupted with enough force to blast a cubic mile of rock across the landscape creating the jagged formation visible today. The 1915 eruption while smaller, still managed to send Lahar's devastating mudflows of volcanic debris and water down the mountain's flanks and generate an ash plume visible from hundreds of miles away. These events serve as reminders that the period of calm since then represents merely a pause in an ongoing cycle of volcanic activity. What makes the current situation particularly concerning is the possibility of a cascade effect, where the awakening of one volcano in the chain could trigger activity in others. The Cascade Range contains numerous active and potentially active volcanoes from Mount Baker in the north to Lassen Peak in the south. They're connected not just by their position along the Pacific Ring of Fire, but by the underlying tectonic processes that feed them all. Mount Shasta, another massive volcano just 60 miles north of Lassen, shows no signs of imminent eruption but has its own history of massive explosive events. Further north, the Three Sisters Volcanic Complex in Oregon has experienced periods of ground uplift, suggesting magma intrusion at depth. Each of these systems has the potential to erupt with devastating consequences for surrounding communities. The scientific community watches these developments with intense interest and growing concern. Volcanic eruptions don't occur in isolation. They're surface expressions of deep processes involving the movement of magma through the Earth's crust, driven by forces operating at scales spanning continents and oceans. Understanding these connections, and predicting where and when the next eruption might occur, remains one of the greatest challenges in modern volcanology. Have transformed scientific understanding of Hawaii's volcanoes and their broader Pacific implications. The discovery that magma can travel horizontally through unknown subterranean routes means hazard maps must be reconsidered. Regions once deemed safe may now face new risks if molten rock can move across previously unimaginable distances. In response, Hawaii's emergency management agencies are revising evacuation and communication plans. The October eruption proved that minor tremors can escalate to major lava fountains within 15 hours, leaving almost no time for error. Updated protocols now stress rapid coordination between scientists and emergency teams, alongside clear timely public alerts, an expanded sensor network promises earlier detection, yet deep magma movement may still occur undetected until it nears the surface. Underwater volcanoes further complicate monitoring, as most submarine eruptions remain invisible to land-based systems. Tourism, a pillar of Hawaii's economy, faces the challenge of balancing fascination with volcanic activity against genuine danger. Managing this tension requires careful policy decisions about safety and sustainability. Meanwhile, debate continues over lava composition and its meaning. Some scientists believe the eruption marks a new volcanic phase, while others see it as an extreme case within historical patterns. What's certain is that Hawaii's volcanic system is far more intricate and interconnected than once thought, its fiery roots tracing back to a vast mantle plume that has built and carried the islands across the Pacific for millions of years. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed exploring Hawaii's awakening volcano, don't forget to like and share this video to help others discover it too. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you never miss the next eruption of discovery. Thanks for being with us on this great journey. Leave your thoughts in the comments and like to help us. Remember to subscribe for more. See you soon.